Okay. That's like saying that the uh, worker at Ford or everything gets laid off. Okay, yeah. they've worked for Ford for 20 years. Right. Three weeks before Christmas, they get laid right. off. They can't make the boat payment, the house payment, that, 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 and that. Well, you know, what a rotten president, what a rotten Congress, we can't, you know, we can't make our house I'm not saying that, I didn't say the Congress should do anything. Well, I'm just saying. I said, but, but a, they're, health, they're a healthy paying. leader would, would, would tell everybody eight months earlier, we have a big problem in the world market. We're not competing very well. We may end up having to close a factory if we're not careful. We'd better think about this together. But that's what I'm saying, is that they got to take responsibility. If they know their career is only 10 years, then they got to sort they, it out. They sort and what it they're out. saying to you is, as long as we raise the marginal tax rate, the amount they have to play with is going down. So the pressure on them to get higher salaries is greater than people think it is. Because the net they're making has gone down, not gone up. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, if you're the owner and you treat that with arrogance, and you're an owner who has a private corporate jet and you own a big corporation and you have a stadium given to you by the city on a really nice deal, and you and they now get into a fight, if you decide just to fight each other, which is Taylorism, why would you think the strike would end? Whereas if you'd come over here and say, wait a second, we're part of a lot bigger system that has, play, that has customers out here. We are, we, are the, we are actually the fiduciaries of a great national pastime called baseball. We have a moral responsibility to find a solution. This tone, this conversation, is totally different from Taylorism. It's a different model. But notice, this is also broken up because when you go to Taylorism, and they hire a union agent. Now, these guys have an agent who's paid to fight, and these guys have an agent who's paid to fight. And they go off into a room, and they couldn't care less about the customer. Absolutely. But what they're doing is the same thing we do with the beads. They're, they're pulling it out, and they don't have any control over the real right. beads coming in, which is just right. over right. 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 right, which is why what they really ought to do is every single one of the players and every single one of the owners ought to go off as a group, kick out their agents on both sides, yeah. and sit down without the lawyers and talk as human beings about the national pastime. Also. They ought to do it because as people who want to serve their fans and the sport that they are the fiduciary responsible of, it's the right thing to do. And just say, we don't want now. When you get done with all the talk and you have reached an agreement, you bring in the lawyers to legally codify the agreement. But the minute you get the two sides lawyers, you leave this and you go back over here. And what you've done is you've now blocked right here. And you, these guys don't talk to these guys because they each have a hired, hatchet, a, hired, a hired gun. And the hired guns are sitting there shooting at each other. And they can't make the decisions anyway. Right. But they, can, the but they can border the communications. So this team only hears from their hired gun, and this team only hears from their hired gun. So the owners get one-sided views, and the players get one-sided views. And over here is the customer and the national pastime, both of which are being served badly by both the owners and the players. And that's why the Deming model is so much more powerful at providing service and providing goods than is the Taylor model. Now, we've got to get through some more stuff. <laughs> but, but, notice what the next, the next current is, principle five. Every person, process, and job is part of an interdependent larger system. So if you start with, gee, here is the pastime of baseball. Here are the 130 million fans. Here are the people who earn a living selling, you know, Cokes and beer and popcorn and tickets. Here is the players and the owners. Now you see yourself in a much bigger system, and your ego gets much smaller. You're a tiny part of that system, okay? And unless you see yourself as your, you and your process and your job are part of a larger system, how can you figure out what your contribution is? That's why I said earlier, when I said wipe off the table, the first question is, why? because you've got to figure out what system you're part of. Principle number six, and this is very hard to get across people, continual learning is the basis for continual improvement. I can't overstate this. You have to learn every day of your life. We have got to rethink education from the ground up. So from prior to birth, from conception to death, there are things we can do to maximize your chance of learning. If we are the best learning society on the planet, we will, we will dominate the planet in terms of our productivity. And that means rethinking everything from the ground up. And if you are not continually learning every day, you don't get it. OK? Principle now, so take those six principles. Let me go back and, and, and show them to you in this way. Value is defined by the customer. Value is invented by the producer. 
Production is a system of processes. Everyone contributes. And continuous improvement by everyone is the most powerful model. Now let's look at a, at a non-manufacturing example of this, uh, one of the great systems of this country, the Ritz-Carlton. For Ritz-Carlton hotels, it's a matter of constantly improving services to its guests. For in a real sense, its product is service. And they also understand that with total quality management, the old ways no longer work. If it was true that that quality, that you could reach uh, the peak of quality, if it was not a moving target, if it wasn't a co continuous voyage, then uh, we would still be uh, driving Model T Fords. You see, there is always a new dimension a new frontier to be captured. It's very interesting that uh, most uh, people think that statistical process control does not exist in the service industry. It, it certainly does. We have, so we have key demands by customers, key expectations, identified, of course, through careful surveys. And for all those key expectations, we have processes and those processes are measured. In fact, they measure 720 work areas throughout the company and on a daily basis. Then those measurements are combined with comments from guest surveys to form a database which is used for continuous improvement. Okay. Is that helpful? Now, seen from that context, I mean, you apply it to how, do the, how does the reservation clerk answer the phone? How does the bellman greet you at the door? How do they take care of your towels? How do they take care of room service? How do they take care of the restaurant? I mean, every aspect. It's not just manufacturing. Every aspect of life. What if we had a quality-driven legal system? What if we had a quality-driven bureaucracy? And, and, you, and you can be. I mean, you, you know, bureaucrat doesn't have to be a negative word. Because originally it simply meant somebody who was systematic in doing things. Now. Remember the three big concepts of entrepreneurial free enterprise. First, the entrepreneur is a creative enterprise, is a creative inventor. Second, the customer or the market or the goal defines success. And third, getting the job done is the focus. So, you invent, the market judges whether or not your invention is useful. And Getting the job done as you've defined it is how you define whether or not you're succeeding. If you apply quality to education in that context, you'd have a totally different rhythm and pattern of how we try to learn. It would be much more dynamic, much more open. And the focus would be on how much do you learn, not how long do you sit.